my name is Lori Cohen. I am the current president of the North Fork Women for Women Fund. The North Fork Women for Women Fund is a, an incredibly unique organization in that we were started by a small group of women who wanted to help other women in their community who needed financial assistance and even personal assistance with healthcare needs and you know, all, all kinds of things we've helped um, our members with. It was in 1992. With me was my friend Beva Eastman, who lived with Nancy Dean in Orient. And suddenly she asked me, if you could do one thing out on the North Fork for the lesbian community, what would you do? What would you like? What would you wish for? It was a big question. So I thought about it, and like usually happens to me, the light bulb goes on, and I said, I wish we had an organization of uh, women out here on the North Fork, and we would raise funds to give the women help, financial help, mo mental help, emotional help, sisterly help. And within a week, Beva had reached out to our beloved Jan Swanson, for whom the auction benefit is named, to ask if she liked the idea and would she help. She had some ideas of her own. Jan always had some ideas of her own. She decided that there would be a board. She was going to put together a board. And she had even decided what she was going to call the organization. Jan's idea for the board was to invite women of different et decades, beginning in the 20s, all the way to, at that point, the 70s, and to have diversity among uh, the geography of where all of us lived. So we were represented from Riverhead to Orient. And uh, I represented, since I had just turned 40, the 44th decade. Uh, Claudia Slazik was in the third decade. Melissa Spiro was the, the 20s. Carol Marcus was in the 50s. And Lucy Goodman, the 60s, and Ginny more was in the 70s. That was our first board, and uh, Carol Marcus was our treasurer, I believe, and Lucy Goodman the secretary, and Jan was the president. And we got going in September and had our meetings where we evolved with bylaws, which Mary Dorman uh, pro bono did work submitting our 501c3 papers, that was a big deal to submit them to uh, the state government and to get going as a charity on the North Fork. There was a wonderful fundraiser uh, in someone's backyard, two, two lesbians who had rented a home, I believe in Kutchog or Southold, and they had the first fundraiser for the organization. We had an initial startup anonymous donation of $720 in addition to that first fundraiser in the summer of 92 to designate to 12 applicants $60 each to cover their breast health welfare. In summer of 93, second summer of the organization, we had the uh, auction Labor Day weekend, we decided, was the, the time to have an auction where we would attract the most lesbians to uh, an event where we could fundraise. Mary Dorman offered her services, again, to be the auctioneer. And in the courtyard of the barn, we had the auction. In the backyard, we did an old-style barbecue. But we had a lot of fun, corn and ribs, and raised thousands of dollars. By that second year, we did have bylaws, and we started to develop a newsletter. Melissa Spiro and myself were the editors of the first newsletter, and at that time, that was the way to get the word out about events, 
and health care. We tried to put out a newsletter quarterly. I think it was semi-annually, but it was uh, very successful. After that uh, second auction, we decided we needed to do other fundraising events. In addition to doing the fundraising with events, we decided we needed to write some grants. And Nancy Tooney, who was on the second board, had experience writing grants. So the two of us got together and wrote uh, several grants, one of which was to Long Island Fund for Women and Girls. That was to assist us in the newsletter because we were successful with our newsletter. We needed also to cover the costs for the newsletter, the mailings, the envelopes, the print, and we didn't want to diminish our, our treasury. We were successful, got a nice grant for, from them. In addition, we've gotten a number of anonymous grants to keep the mission going, uh, but mostly the funds have come from different events that we've had throughout the year. Our main mission is to first give out health care grants. So we give out grants to people who need money to pay for some aspect of their health care. I'm Karen Sauvignet, and I'm chair of the Grants Committee of NUFLIF. I've been serving as chair for, I would say, six or seven years. And in the early years, a lot of the emphasis was on making grants to help women get mammograms, which at that time was not very much covered by health insurance. In the time since then, it's Nuflith is now 25 years old, mammograms are covered both by most health insurances and by Medicare. Mostly what we do now is help women meet health care related expenses that are not covered by health insurance and if we weren't able to make the grant they would not be able to get the care or the service. So we understand that rather broadly. We've recently made a grant to put in a ramp for a disabled woman on dialysis who, if she didn't have the ramp, would not be able to get out of her house and therefore would not be able to go to work. And building a ramp is not covered by anything. So we gave her a grant and she showed us the construction estimate and then the bill and she now has a ramp and she's still working. I'm very proud of that grant. We do a lot of grant making that is helping women with dental related expenses. Dentistry is not covered by most health insurance and it's definitely not covered by Medicare. And it's an important aspect of health. So over the years we've provided, I would say a third probably of the grants that we've made have been to help women with dental expenses. Our grants are much more based on an application where someone states an, a need and tells us what her income and expenses are and her assets so that we have a sense of her capacity to meet whatever is the immediate need that she describes. In the typical year, since I've been doing it at least, we've been making approximately 10 grants a year. Our average grant amount is around $1,300. Always what I do is make a recommendation to the board. And the board, if they have questions, they ask me to come in or speak on the phone and you know, clarify things for them. Often they merely review my recommendation and I don't make a yes, no recommendation. I explain who the person is, never even using initials. So. The only people in Nuflif who know who our applicants are are me and Barbara, who cuts the checks. So it's kept very confidential from anyone. We try and foster community by helping each other. We have the Help Her Committee, which is probably one of the most active things that we do on a daily basis. So we do everything from shoveling your driveway in, in the winter if you, you, know, you can't get out and shovel, to walking your dog, to feeding your cat, to take driving you to medical appointments. Anything that you need done, but either you're alone, so it's hard for you to do those things, you've reached a point in your age or your physical abilities where they're somewhat limited, you 
had an illness and you need some additional assistance, you know, you pick up the phone, you call us, and we arrange for one of our volunteers to come and do those things for you. About seven years ago, a bunch of us were sitting around and we were talking about how wonderful it is that Nofuf gives money to women who are gay women out here who need assistance, but that how money is not always the, answer, the only answer and that people need a lot more than that and maybe we should be doing something about it. So somehow off the cuff I thought of the name Help Her, which stuck. Uh, we don't provide emergency medical care, but we will uh, assist people around medical issues. So for instance, if you had an emergency hospitalization, you can call on us, we would uh, move your car, we would take care of your animals, we would uh, visit with you, we would, um, if you needed assistance when you got home, we would help, we would provide meals. And we don't do this ourselves, what we do is we coordinate not only the women of our community, but that person's own personal network, whether it be their neighbors and their family, as well as us. So it's kind of an inclusive, let's work together and make things better. And I think that, that we come from the tradition of uh, wanting to help, wanting to do better, wanting to do, to do good. <laughs> we also have an archives committee, which has collected all kinds of material for the past 25 years and is a part of putting this movie together. Um, to keep alive our history, which is incredibly important. Back in, I think, 2002, Leslie Weissman was president of NUFUF. Phyllis Swarich was the secretary, and they had m many papers, papers from the beginning of the community, back in the 1960s and early 70s, and documents that were relevant to NUFWF. Anne Mackay was, I believe, kind of roped in, <laughs> but a willing, you know, a willing hostage to the idea. And then Anne Mackay organized her committee, of which I was a, a foot soldier in, in the, the archive um, army of Anne Mackay. Plans were made for organizing the materials and coordinating them with Anne's vast library of things that were relevant to the community itself on the North Fork and the organization specifically. I heard it put in one way was that the North Fork Women for Women Fund didn't develop the lesbian community out here. The lesbian community out here developed the North Fork Women for Women. So there was a a call to really show the roots of the lesbian community on the North Fork and tie that in with the roots of the organization and make that a part of not just the organization's history but the North Fork's history and women's history. Um, and it was tied in as well with uh, the Sophia Smith collection so that it can be studied and researched by scholars of women's studies. Hey, North Fork Women for Women Fund people. This is Kelly Anderson, and I'm at the Sophia Smith Collection at Smith College, where we have your records. We are so grateful to have the collection here. We've been collecting materials here since the 90s, and it covers meeting minutes and memorabilia and scripts from shows you've done and some videotapes and oral histories, and it's a great record of uh, lesbian history out on the North Fork, but also women's history in general. We don't have a lot of history from smaller communities and especially from lesbian communities, so it's a great addition to what we have. Um, my students use it all the time. Um, when I'm teaching classes, we go through it and look at it, and it's a great resource. So I just want to say congratulations on a long, wonderful history, and thanks for entrusting your records with us and many more years of good work. Thanks. The archive has to be a living project. It has to be something that continues to document this moment today for that moment tomorrow. So people still need to be contributing their photos, contributing their, uh, their records, contributing their stories so that the archive can continue to be vital. 
Hufluff is comprised not only of just the board, um, which does a lot of work, by the way, um, but we do a lot of sort of ancillary things that also help with our outreach because it helps get uh, our name out there and our mission, therefore. Um, we started the Anne Mackay Scholarship uh, about, I think we've given four years of scholarships to high school students who fill out an application. We, they write an essay about diversity and how they're, they've been engaged in diversity or how, how diversity has affected them. And that's been fascinating, just reading those essays. And I think it is very important for Nufufu, frankly, to be part of the community. And that's one of the reasons when Anne died. Uh, I had the idea of starting something that could provide some scholarships, sure, for people who are gay, but local, local young women who certainly need the money, believe me. And as we have gotten these uh, applications, I mean, God knows there's real need here. And it's something that I think our organization should be very proud, proud to support. About three years ago, we decided we wanted to have an event in the winter to get people to come together. And we decided to start to honor some of the women who have made a difference in Nufuf throughout its history. Um, our first Founders Award went to Lucy Goodman, who was one of our founding mothers. Um, we've given the award to Sandy Benedetto. And then last year we gave the award to Leslie Weissman, another woman who was there from the very beginning. And it's nice to honor the people who have gotten you to where you are. We have an arts and education committee, which it helps put together some of the events that we see, the education events, they show movies. We have a, like a outdoor events committee, which put together our golfing event and our tennis events. We've done lots of other outdoor events, kayaking on Hallex Creek, meditation, yoga, our annual gay pride event. We've also had community service events like the beach cleanup and the collection of school supplies for CAST. But to me, Nufuf is community. It is a group of women who came together to help each other and now we have not only continued that but expanded that. We got an award last year from the Human Rights Campaign recognizing the work that Nufuf had done and I think that demonstrates how much our outreach has helped. Now more people know about us and know about what the good work that we've done and that's a testament both to the people who started the organization because we wouldn't be here without them um, and it's also a testament to groups who have followed them, who have continued that mission and expanded it um, as much as they could. What it means to me is, most of all, that it lives and it changes and it grows and it makes people feel safe and makes people feel more comfortable it does so many things that an organization that started in the driveway of the UU and in a local uh, little restaurant, I mean, think of it. Think of how much commitment has gone into this. And I give my best love and good wishes to the North Fork Women for Women Fund. I hope all your dreams come true. When I was five years old, I wrote on a piece of paper, this is who I love. And I listed Susan, Ramin, and a few other little girls. And then I felt this horrible flush of guilt. Walking through the high school kind of like courtyard as a senior and thinking, you know, I've been here for all these years and I haven't had a crush on a boy the whole time. Um, and then somewhere that year, the next year, realizing that I felt about girls the way 
boys felt about girls. I mean, I think I was a junior in college and I was a transfer student. And I was hanging out with the women in my building. And I thought, something's weighing heavy on my heart. <laughs> I think it may be my time. I think that's when I first realized I was a lesbian.